Hey, what's up, everybody? So um, this is the first video in covering Chapter 8, Hypothesis Testing. Uh, hypothesis Testing is a very tough uh, con uh, chapter. It's a very tough concept to understand. So the the textbook has four sections, but I broke I broke down 8-1 into two parts, the basics of Hypothesis Testing and Hypothesis Testing in Depth. So here's how I recommend you guys watch the videos. So I recommend you watch it, um, watch this one first, which is on the basics of hypothesis testing. Uh, and then I want you guys to watch the uh, claim about proportion, testing a claim about a proportion, and then testing a claim about a mean. Um, and then finally, co go back and then watch 8-1 part, um, part 2. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this question here. So before we try, we dive into hypothesis testing. This is a very good analogy to hypothesis testing, the justice system in, in the United States. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this situation. So we have, it says an investigation of a bank robbery. After an investigation of a bank robbery, police arrested Joe Smith. And the district attorney, the DA, the district attorney, charged him with armed robbery. Use your knowledge of the U.S. criminal justice system to answer the following question. So the the justice system usually starts with a claim, right? So what is the DA's claim against Joe Smith? So obviously they they arrested him, the police arrested him, and the district attorney's office charged him with a crime. What are what is their claim against him? What is their belief about his regarding his innocence or guilt? So they probably think he's guilty, right? They probably think that he did it. Otherwise, why would you arrest an innocent man? <clears throat> okay, and then um, once a person is charged, now we got to test the claim, right? Once we make the claim again about a person, you got to test. Uh, you got to test the claim. So in the justice system, we do that by a trial, right? So a, a trial is scheduled to determine whether Joe Smith is guilty or not guilty. So question, what are the two possible hypotheses regarding Joe Smith's guilt? So what are the two possibility? Uh, the first hypothesis is what we're going to assume to be true. And what do we assume a person, um, what do we assume about a person if they're arrested for a crime? We assume that they're innocent until proven guilty, right? At least that's what we hope, right? And that's exactly by by law. That's what we um, that's what the law would say, right? A person is innocent until proven guilty. So we're going to assume that the person that Joe Smith is not guilty. In other words, he's innocent, right? Two different uh, things actually, but then very related, kind of related. Uh, hypothesis two would be what we want to prove. So if he's, if hypothesis one is that he is not guilty, then the alternative hypothesis would be that he is guilty. And that's what we're going to try to prove. The, the, the district attorney is trying to prove, right? So once we have the hypotheses, uh, we're, we're going to um, collect and present evidence, right? That's what the district attorney would do. So think about this. So think about the evidence that the district attorney has against Joe and and think about, well, what's the chances of all of that being coincidental? So in other words, assuming that Joe is innocent or not guilty, what is the probability that the evidence against him is a coincidence or occurred by random chance? So you guys tell me, how likely is it that it's just by random chance? So let's say that the evidence started with Joe having financial problems, and that was the first um, piece of evidence that the district attorney comes up with and say, uh, in trying to prove that Joe's guilty. Would you say that's just by random chance, right? It's very likely that it was just by chance. I would say it's very, like, more up here that it's just by chance, right? You just happen to arrest a guy who has financial problems. That doesn't mean that he's guilty of bank robbery. Uh, it's just by chance that he, it could have been just by chance that he just happened to have financial problems, right? Well, what if they, um, the, the next set of evidence was that the robbery occurred when Joe wasn't at work and he has no alibi. So he wasn't at work, so he had the opportunity or the time to commit the crime 
uh, and he has no alibi about where he was, right? So could he have committed the crime? So could have could that have been by coincidence? Could it have just been by random chance that both of these things happened, that he was having financial problem and he has no alibi and that he wasn't working at the time, so he had the chance to rob the bank? Probably very likely, but you probably would like move maybe just a little bit down here to say, well, I don't know, you know, like maybe it's not by chance, but but mo most likely you you're probably still saying like yeah, it could be by by chance, right? Very likely that it's by chance that all of these both of these things occurred. Well, what if um what if there the next set of evidence was eyewitness identification? So maybe the bank uh, teller um, identified Joe smith as the person who who point the gun at him who robbed the bank now what would you say could that have been by chance could all three of these could have just happened by chance he is ha having financial problems um, he has no alibi he had the, the opportunity to rob the bank uh, and witness identified him as the the person robbing the bank now you're probably going to move down and say okay so maybe um, it wasn't by random chance uh, but you're still not going to say, you know, it's a slam dunk, right? Well, what if the next set of evidence was the following? Let's say they, the police, they, they go in and and they raid his house and they found bags of cash. They found a gun, a ski mask, um, a map of the bank detailing escape routes at, at Joe's house, right? They, they found all of this at Joe's house when they, you know, raided his house. So now what would you say? Like all of this evidence could have had been by coincidence? Is it likely that it's just a coincidence or is it unlikely to be a coincidence? Um, how would you, you know, where would you rank it? All right, so you're, you're probably moving more towards, with this last evidence, you're probably moving towards of below 50-50 chance, right? You might say, okay, it probably didn't all happen by chance. Maybe Joe is guilty. Okay, now let's say the last piece of evidence that the, the, uh, district attorney presents is that they found fingerprints at the crime scene that matched Joe's that matched Joe's fingerprints. Now, now where, where would you be at on the scale? Could all of this evidence against Joe just been happen to be by random chance? So the guy has financial problems. They find he has the opportunity to rob the bank. People identify him as the uh, person who robbed the bank. They found bags of cash, a gun, ski masks, detailing escape routes of the bank at uh, Joe's house. They found fingerprints of him um, at the crime scene by chance, or maybe very unlikely that all of this evidence was, all of these guilty evidence was pointing at Joe to be the the uh, the actual person who robbed the bank. So I, I would probably say all of this is unlikely to have occurred by chance. So I, I would say that unlikely or a low probability that all of this was just by random chance uh, so we have a claim right we have a claim against we, we start with a claim then we want to test the claim we have our our two hypotheses we have evidence and now we have to make a conclusion about about joe's guilt right we we assume that he's not guilty so are we going to stick with it or we're going to uh you know lean towards the other way not stick with it so because the probability of all of this occurring all of this evidence is very low like it probably didn't happen by chance we're going to i would say we're going to reject it right we're going to reject the the first hypothesis that he's not guilty in other words we're leaning towards when we reject the notion that the hypothesis that he's not guilty so we're rejecting this. It kind of it would mean that we're going to we're leaning towards the guilty, right? So we're 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 kind of supporting it. We're we're supporting. We're having we found evidence to support the 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 alternative or hypothesis too. Okay, so then we would conclude that there is sufficient sufficient evidence to support the DA's claim that Joe is guilty. All right. So hopefully this makes sense. In the next video, I'm going to um, look at a, a, a real example of what hypothesis testing looks like. And kind of, I'm going to go back and forth and kind of relate it to this video. Uh, so make sure you kind of understand this. All right.
see you in the next video.